All right. So welcome to Expressor Shots, uh, filmed from beautiful downtown Westport on a sunny but crisp day. We're at the Cottage Coffee House, and I'm here with my new friend Pat Evans to talk to me this morning. Hello. How are you doing? Today? I'm I'm doing very well. So listen, Pat. Uh, it's April Fool's Day, uh, a day that I always love, and I love the play pranks. I got pranked this morning by my son. He, he pulled a good one on me. Uh, but today we're talking about something that's not a joking matter. We're talking about something very serious and, and near and dear to your heart. Uh, we're talking about Parkinson's disease. That's right. And April is Parkinson's disease month uh, awareness. and maybe awareness month. So maybe you can talk a bit about that, Pat, and let, let, let us know about it. Well, the reason there is a designation of awareness month is because there's a certain stigma attached to park, having Parkinson's. People tend to think of it as a person, uh, an old person's disease, and uh, when you think of it, in my mind, I used to think of an old man sort of cartoon of an old man sort of you know, sloughing along, and really that's not really what it is completely. The average age of, of onset is 60 years of age, but but there are people as even in their teens that can get it. Um, about 10% actually are under 40. So it, it affects people of all ages, and, and it, the thing, good news is there are things that can be done about having Parkinson's. And they've done lots of research, and they're still not clear on what causes it, if it's head trauma or if it's something. They That's don't right. know, so That's there's right. a lot of research to be done, and, and any age can be affected um, right. from young to, to older. The, only about 10% is genetic, and the other 90% they really don't know. Um, I happened to be hit on the head with a garage door about three weeks before the tremor started, but I haven't had a lot of neurologists agree that that could be the cause of my problem. Um, but they think that it, they know it's a loss of dopamine in your brain. Right. Uh, they don't exactly know why that happens. They're looking at all sorts of factors. Environmental uh, factors are considered to be part of pesticides. It. And, and pesticides and insecticides uh, are. There has been a connection. So this is one of the reasons that I think it's very important in this area where there's lots of farming to make sure that people know that and get diagnosed as early as possible. So, so when we're talking about Parkinson's disease, we're talking about that component of but we're also talking about things that can affect that. So pesticides, farming, like you mentioned in this area, um, sports, where, where head traumas. Muhammad Ali is, a, is an example of somebody with Parkinson's. Obviously, a lot of blows to, to his head and whether that was a result. But there are other things. So the awareness component is really about talking about it, getting it on the table, because people don't like to talk about things that are going on in their lives, especially guys tend to be a little bit kind of hold offish. Well, my, that's my sense that there's a lot of 1.5 times as many men get it as women. So, 1.5, eh? Mm -hmm. So I think that, that men are maybe reluctant to, to talk about some of the symptoms they have. Maybe they don't see their doctors very often. Uh, maybe they're worried about losing their jobs or their employment. What friends will think of them at the, yeah. Exactly. So I, I, my, my sense is that it's very underdiagnosed in this area. It could also be because we don't have a neurologist, I mean, we don't have any movement disorder specialist, uh, which is the, the neurologist that is ideal when you have Parkinson's. But I think maybe, um, maybe family physicians um, uh, know that there's a long waiting list to find out, uh, to get a, a conclusive diagnosis. Maybe that slows them down from referring, I'm not sure. But, but early diagnosis is, is really important. Right. Because if you don't get diagnosed early, so then you can, don't how can what you can, do, you, do. can you kind of go to your doctor and say, I, I, "Is there a test to be diagnosed for, or is it?" There's no blood test. No way. Um, but this, the, if you have three or four of the symptoms, and what are some of the symptoms, Pat? Well, the, the, the non-motor symptoms are, are important to think about because the motor symptoms are more obvious. When I started my tremor, I had a, a tremor in my right hand, so that's pretty obvious. You, you're going to talk to a doctor about that. But the non-motor symptoms include. Um, sleep problems. REM sleep disorder is when you act out your dreams at night. It can be a biomarker of, okay. of Parkinson's. Loss of smell is, uh, or diminished smell is, is another one. Uh, hand smaller handwriting is another one. Depression and anxiety are very significant. Now you wouldn't necessarily think if you're depressed you necessarily would have Parkinson's, but but it is because of the biochemical changes in your brain, not because right. you're, you're having a bad day. 
Um, and 40% of people with Parkinson's have depression or anxiety. So yeah. that's huge. Yeah, and depression and stress play into a lot of um, a lot of disorders and things like that. So if you're definitely having issues with stress and depression, obviously seek out some help. Um, and again, we don't know if that's a result or, or how it works out, right, Pat? But so listen, Parkinson's, James Parkinson's back in, I guess, 1817, a long time back, writes an essay on shaky palsy. That's right. And that's kind of where it gets uh, identified. So it's not a new, and it's not a disease, it's a disorder of the, of the, of the neural system in the brain. From what I understand, it's not a disease, and it goes through stages, right? Um, so it's it's been a long time coming. It's got some recognition. So April the 11th is is Parkinson's World day, Parkinson's. World Parkinson's Day, uh, and so Pat contacted me a while back. Said, "Hey, John, would you consider carrying some of our our sleeves for uh, Parkinson's?" Um, so she brought some in for us today. So these are the sleeves. We have about 50 or 60 of them that we we'll put on our cups. Now our cups are insulated, but they still they make a nice sleeve. And there's some good information on your Pat, and it also talks about this super walk. So maybe you can talk to us a bit about what the super walk was uh, that happened uh, in Perth. Well, when I moved here six years ago to this area, I, I had been participating in the super walk in Toronto and Ottawa for many years, but we didn't have anything like that here, and people had to go a distance to get to uh, join one of these walks. And it's Parkinson Canada's major fundraiser, um, and uh, they, it, it enables them to provide the res to uh, get to participate in research and and uh, get the kind of services that people need across the country. So when it comes to the fundraising component, is it for research or is it for support or where is it or where the funds kind of going? It's at? for everything. It's for it's for education, webinars, materials that people get when they're diagnosed. It, go, it goes a large goes into a, 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 a scientific research which is innovative and leading edge and. Um, all across the country, um, and it also goes into things like support groups. So, for example, we have now two support groups in this area: uh, one in Perth and one in Smith Falls that just started last year. Yeah. And they and are called, or they're called support groups. And education people, people who have Parkinson's, it's very important that they get education. One of the ways that they get education and emotional support is through these support groups. Right. Okay. So I facilitate actually the one in Smith Falls, which is brand new. Okay. So, um, and we have various educational events and that kind of thing, and that all costs money. So how, so, so just backpack, backpedal a little bit for me so that those support groups are offered where? Where would you go to? In, well, right now, they're, they're all, they're all around. There, there's one in, uh, Perth is, would be the closest. But you go to the hospital in Perth, or you go to oh, where, a, the, where yes. the groups actually run. Yeah. The one in Perth is offered at Community Home Support Services okay. on Sunset. The one I run is that community, at Rideau Community Health Services. Okay. Uh, uh, there's one in Kempville. There's one in Almont. Uh, they're they're all they're all over the place. But we just started the one in Smith Falls. So that that's an example of where the money would go. Well, congratulations for, for starting that and being part of that. I mean, that's obviously an important role uh, to play. Another way the money is going to be spent this year is to train people in, in a, uh, Parkinson's Wellness Recovery Exercise Program. We have a, we've also started a couple of exercise groups uh, for people with Parkinson's because exercise is the best prescription for Parkinson's. Right. So we now have a boxing program in Smith Falls, and we also have uh, a, a programs that are um, also help, we, we, we work with the, the CPHC to run specialized programs for people with Parkinson's. So there's also one in Perth now and one in Smith Falls. Nice. And there's, and there's stages to Parkinson's as well, the stage one, two, it, it goes to that's stage right. five, and then that's kind of, or do they you know, know, or? I don't think people spend a lot of time thinking about the stages that right. they're in. Um, you, you, the terms I've used mostly is mild, moderate, and I guess that, that point I was going to try to make is, is, is there a way to slow the stages down by doing these kind of things, or is it? Well, you know, everybody is different. Right. I've had it for 13 years, so a lot of people are not doing as well as I am after 13 years. And that may be a combination of the type of Parkinson's that I have, and also some of the things that maybe I've done that might have helped. Um, but exercise is really key, um, for sure, getting the right medication, getting right. the right kind of support, getting even understanding uh, better diet and, and, and lifestyle choices as well. So it's really lifestyle exercise and, and that all makes a lot of sense. 
Uh, so the red tulip, where does the red tulip come in? And, and uh, so that's kind of the s symbol for Parkinson's. That's right. It is a symbol for, tar uh, for Parkinson's. And it's, it's the, I think it, my, my thinking is I associate the tulip with hope and spring. And right. just, you know, like the daffodil with cancer. Um, but I, I think that it's, uh, the red tulip is, is the sign of spring for me. And uh, so it, for me, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's looking at, at Parkinson's from a really positive point of view, rather than thinking there's nothing that can be done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. So if, if people want to support uh, the Parkinson's uh, financially, what kind of ways can they do it? They can obviously buy, buy a tulip and support it this way. Are there other ways that they can get involved in the... Uh, there's a super walk the as super well. The super walk is always the second Saturday. We, this is the third year we've had it, actually, and uh, it's always the second Saturday after Labor Day. Okay, uh, in, and, in September. And it will be at Conlon Farm in Perth. Okay. And if they want to find out more information, or if they'd like to sponsor someone, they they should call Parks in Canada in Ottawa, or or just Google super walk, and something will come up. Nice. Nice. Well, I'm so glad you came in, Pat. Thank you this so is, much. Uh, it's a great day, and you talk about spring and, and being optimistic about the summer coming. It's coming. Is it it's coming, coming, Pat? Or because <laughs> it seems coming. like it comes. In time for our tulips. And then it the goes. <laughs> Somebody was telling me that this week they're calling for some more cold weather, and I thought it's got to be getting warm soon. It's like oh we're, my goodness! We're into it, April. It, it's got to. We, we'd like to be able to sell the tulips outside, and yes. it would be nice to be able to do that. But that'll be April 13th, and at the two independents in Perth and Smith Falls and also the Shoppers Drug Mart in Smithville. So get out there and buy yourself a red tulip, support Parkinson's disease, and thanks again, Pat, for coming in. Thank you so much. Cheers, and if you're into cottage coffee and you get one of these little uh, cup holders, there's all kinds of great information on there for you as well. So have a great day.